excited to be back with y'all again this weekend. My name is Izzy, this is Mickey Mike, and this is Hector. Yes, people, yes, yes, yes. It's gonna be amazing. We have such an amazing show for you guys, but everybody, if you're at home, which we know you are, get up off the couch, get your family in the room, get those hands raised and get ready, because yeah. we are about to worship. Let's go, people. I'm gonna stand up. Like that, there you go. Let's go. What's up, everybody? We're gonna go crazy, we're gonna jump, we're gonna worship, we're gonna express our love to the Father. Thanks for joining us. Let's have some fun together. Let's sing this. Before I ever started running, you were chasing after me. Before I knew that I was helpless, you I won the victory. Before I fell into the darkness, you were out to set me free. Before I knew that I was broken, you poured out your grace on me. You are everything, everything to me. Let's sing that, you're everything. You are everything, everything to me. You are the future. Yeah, in front of me You're the fire inside my bones And not until eternity You are all that I need All that I need Yeah, let's jump Before I felt that I was worthless You took all the cross for me Before I knew what I was an orphan You have made me royalty Cause you are everything, everything to me You are the future in front of me You're the fire inside my bones And the now to eternity You are all that I need, all that I need You are the light Sixth graders, we're not done yet. Let's keep partying, let's keep having fun. We're gonna sing this song called Higher Than the Sky. So let's sing it out together. But first, let's jump. Two, three, four. You lie, you lie, 
is burning through the shadows. You are here, we have nothing to fear. You would, you win, you promise everlasting. And over and over, I'll see your hand. I am in the sky, your love, your love is deeper than the sea. Your grace, your grace is washing over me. And over and over, I see your head Higher than the sky, your love, your love is deeper than the sea Your grace, your grace is washing over me and calling me on your own Wherever you're at, whether you're in your room, your living room, get off wherever you're sitting. If you're not, stand up. Come find a space to jump and go crazy and have some fun in the presence of the Lord. And we're going to jump together. But first, let's sing this. Higher than the sky, your love, and everybody jump. Your grace, your grace is washing over me and pouring me on. You roll the sea. The sky, your love, your love is deeper than the sea. Your grace, your grace is washing over me and calling me on. You were last time the struggle. Over there. Yeah, y'all know y'all heard my vocals. I'm just waiting for the worship team to respond to my email to let me yeah. know that. Try to falsetto. I love you, Lord. <laughs> I was super deep. It was the opposite. Uh, the, <laughs> the game we're playing today, guys, hope you're ready. It's called You Laugh, You Lose. Pretty self explanatory, so don't lose. Don't laugh, don't lose. Let's get into it. Let's go, Let's people. Go. Send it. <laughs> Today's game is brought to you by water. H2O, hydrogen, to, don't know what that means, oxygen. Okay, so we're trying not to laugh while we hold water in our mouths while other people do funny, silly stuff. There they are. There they are. Back to me. So, what I was saying, I'm gonna sit here while I drink this water, and they're gonna try to make me laugh and the next person comes up, so on and so forth. Guys? Siri, call mama.
The Mexican one. Oh, oh! I... <laughs> Good job. 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 Oh, I get it. Like, you found me. <laughs> That's cool. I'm gonna go hide again. Pictures. Spend some time second again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh! I love you, bro. Come back! Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Wow. Casey, do your thing, girl. So it looks like you haven't been to the hair salon in a while. <laughs> Tell him. Let me just disinfect your head really fast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that Lysol? Yeah. Oh you had to get disinfected, bro. <laughs> you dirty. Yeah, I smelled it. I was like, what? His eyebrows put in Bo's hair like this. You trained for this day. So someone said that. You think you're Captain America? <laughs> <laughs> this guy? Captain America, dude? He doesn't even have chest hair, bro! I saw y'all. Y'all were laughing, people. I wasn't laughing. Couldn't contain it. I know. Water, I'm, I'm a water was spat everywhere. No matter what, that was a great game. But you guys know you love them. The people that are about to speak and share an amazing word with you, David and Michaela. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. They're going to teach us some new things. So get ready. Get your family in the room. Get your notes out. Let's do this thing. What's up, 5th and 6th graders? Thank you for answering the call. We are in part two of our series, FaceTime. In this series, we're gonna be talking about how we have face-to-face -face time or FaceTime with God every single day. And the most important element, or one of the most important elements of the three elements that we're talking about is reading your Bible. So today, we're gonna to be talking about reading your Bible. I don't know about you guys, but I love reading. After I would say, Good night, mom and dad. Love you, have a good night. I would crawl under my covers and read until the wee little hours of the morning. Did you ever do that? I did not do that. Maybe you're like me and you prefer movies. Maybe you prefer watching TV shows. Maybe the only way that I wanna read is putting subtitles on my movie. Does that count as reading? Hey, I love movies, but hun, that doesn't cut it. Mm. Well, maybe you're like me and you don't love reading. That's okay. I don't love reading, but I do love reading God's Word. At the end of this message, we hope you feel excited and equipped to have face-to-face -face time with God every single day. Reading God's Word has absolutely changed our life, and we can't wait to see it do the same for you. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go find your Bible. Pause this video if you have to, and go get a Bible in front of you. Go find one scattered throughout the house. Go find your personal Bible. If you don't have one, go to the Bible app, and you can download the Bible app for free, and it has many translations. So pause real quick and go get your Bible. I hope you have your Bible in front of you now. This is the very first Bible that I ever read. This is Michaela's favorite Bible that she's had for years. So whether you have a Bible uh, like this or whether you do what I do now, which is just use my phone on the Bible app, I want you to get your Bible in front of you. And here's what you need to know. You are not holding a book. 
You are holding something so much greater than a book. You are holding the Word of God. And throughout history, people have realized there's something different about this book. It's not just a book. Listen to some of the, some of the most extraordinary men and women of history talk about this book. George Washington, our very first president of the United States of mm. America says, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. Another amazing president, Abraham Lincoln says, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given man. All the good of the Savior of the world is communicated to us through this book. Even Queen Elizabeth says this, tell your prince that this book is the secret to England's success. President Ronald Reagan, one of my personal favorites, says, it's more than a book, the life, truth, and power it brings our lives is stronger than anything. And it's not just the power of its presence, but the mayhem of its absence. I love that quote from Ronald Reagan because what he's saying is, not only is there amazing power in God's word when we use it, but there's also mayhem that comes when we abandon it. See, something very significant happened in America in 1963. And after 1963, we saw mayhem happen in America. The 30 years following 1963, we saw a 560% increase in violent crimes. Not 50% increase, not a 100% increase, a 560% increase in violent crimes. We saw a 400% increase in the divorce rate. We saw a 200% increase in teenage suicide. That's crazy. What happened? So what happened in 1963? In 1963, the Bible was taken out of the public school system. We see the effects of this 30 years later, like Pastor David mentioned. It caused critical mayhem in our world, but it's nothing in comparison to the blessing that putting God's Word into your day-to-day -day life can bring to you. So hopefully you understand now that this is not just a book. This is something so much greater than a book. In fact, God's word says in 2 Timothy 3.16 that this is the word of God. It says every part of scripture is God breathed and is useful for one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, and training us to live God's way. See, we are not just reading a book. When you open scripture, you are opening up the breath of God in your life. The Bible is the greatest book in the world, and it has become my most favorite and treasured book. When you spend face-to-face -face time with God every single day and read His Word, it will change your life. It will bring peace. It will bring joy. It will bring uncontainable love for God's Word for people and blessing. It says, in Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You may be thinking, well, that sounds great. Yeah, I, of course, I want God to lead and guide me, but what if I can't even get in God's word because it's too overwhelming, it's too um, big, I can't get through it. Can I tell you the truth that that is a lie from the enemy to keep you and I from being in God's word every single day. He wants you to think it's too confusing, it's too big, it's too overwhelming, you don't know where to start, you don't know where to end. That is a lie from the enemy. God wants to spend face-to-face -face time with you every single day. He will lead you and guide you wherever he is telling you to go. If you ever have felt scared, overwhelmed, or nervous about reading God's word, we have two tips we wanna share with you to help you get into God's word and overcome any fear that you may have. Tip number one, find a good translation. We love reading from the message version or the New Living Translation. And if you don't have either of those versions, that's okay. I don't have those versions in a hard copy. You can download the Bible app, like David mentioned earlier, and read it from there. I love to read the message version because it is so much easier for me to understand. And tip number two, do the time. That is the most important thing that was ever told to me. Do the time. So what you can do is Take your phone, set an alarm for every single day at the same time for only 10 minutes. 
Setting your alarm for 10 minutes a day to spend time with God. All you need to do, read one chapter. And if you're finding that you finished that chapter before the 10 minutes is up, read another one. We love to read a chapter in the Old Testament and a chapter in the New Testament. It is so helpful to expand your understanding of the character and love God has for us. One to two chapters a day might not sound like a lot, but let me tell you, it will change your life. Doing 10 push-ups every single day might not sound like a lot. Do 10 push-ups every single day for a year, and let me tell you, you're gonna be a lot stronger. It's the same with reading God's Word. So hopefully now you realize that the Bible is not just a book, it's God's Word. And throughout history, people have realized there's something different about this book. It's because it's the breath of God. And if you can just set aside 10 minutes a day, reading one or two chapters a day, you will grow closer in an intimate relationship with God. But now I wanna answer the question, why? Why are we doing this? Why is it important? Well, the number one question that pastors get asked is how can I hear God's voice? And the answer is by reading His Word. See, if I was to get a random call on my cell phone and it was from a number I didn't realize, but on the other end I heard Michaela's voice, I would know it's Michaela within a few seconds. Why? Her name didn't pop up on my phone. Well, it's because I've spent a lot of time with her. I know her voice because I've spent time with her every single day for a long time. Now let's say I, I got that same phone call from a random number and someone said, hey, it's your wife, and I want you to go rob that CVS across the street. Well, I know Michaela, I know my wife, and, and I know her character. She's not gonna ask me to go rob a store. So I know that's not her voice on the other end of the phone. You see, when we read God's word, what we are doing is we're learning his voice and his character. So when he speaks to us, we say, I know that voice. That's the voice that I read every single day. I know that character. That's the character of God. And when something doesn't match the character of God, we know it because we've spent time with him. So our desire for you is to spend time with God every single day because when we spend time with him, we get to know him. We grow in relationship with him. And then when he speaks, in a couple moments, we're able to realize that's the voice of God. That's the character of God. So wherever you are, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. And I'm gonna pray that we would all walk away with, with a desire and a practical plan and solution to read God's word every single day. So God, I thank you so much for these fifth and sixth graders. Thank you so much that you have given us your word. You've given us the breath of God and we have access to it, to read about your, your character, to read about your heart and to learn your voice. And I pray that every single person that's hearing my voice right now would get this unquenchable thirst for your word and they would get to know you in an intimate relationship as they spend face time with you every single day in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We've loved having you. We can't wait to see you next week. We love you. Wow, that message was so good. I love them. I love Me them. Too. They are so sweet. They I really love them. Are. I love and them. strong. They yeah. work out a lot. Very true. Very true. <laughs> well, guys, this week was so much fun with y'all. When y'all head into this week, spend time with the Lord. Schedule some time in the morning, at night. You only have to spend 10 minutes. It's super easy. Have some face time with God and read your Bibles. Well, we can't wait to see y'all next week. Same time, same place. Oh, yeah. Guys. See you next week. Love y'all. Love y'all.